Hello and welcome along to Mondo Chalavet Movies. My name is John and this video is going to be my top 10 section 1 banned video nasties. So also I'm going to do some top 10 lists from section 2 and section 3 as well. I've got to say that uh, probably section 3 is the one that you would get and you would say these movies are absolute classics and it's so amazing to think that these were ever considered video, nast video nasties by some people. And in hindsight, it just shows you how wrong these censors were to think that these movies were ever going to influence anybody. Because uh, some of these top 10 movies, with you know certain exceptions, you would consider to be the greatest horror films of all time. First of all, I want to give a quick honourable mention of this title, The Gestapo's Last Orgy. Now, I watched this the other day, and wow, I don't really know what to think of this movie. Um, it's a really hard one to sort of review. It's absolutely brutal to the point of just being, to be honest, some, at some points I was watching, I'm thinking, do I really need to, to see what happens in this movie? Because um, it was taking some really outlandish turns. And I knew, obviously, with Gestapo's last orgy, it, was gonna be, it wasn't going to be a Mary Poppins 3. But I don't know, I just, uh, I don't know. How, at, this, at this moment, I think I need to watch it again, although I'm in no rush to watch it again. I do need to sort of get back to it and give it a kind of full appraisal because I'm a bit confused as to what I saw, mainly because of the fact that the movie itself, it looks sensational. It's really well filmed. It's really well done, actually. Uh, the music in it is so um, memorable and, uh, that you know, I can't get any faults. The cinematography was, was really good. The special effects, for the most part, were really good. And I can't fault it that much. But what I can fault it for is its content. The content in it is, I don't know what they were trying to achieve by it, by showing some of the certain scenes in here. Um, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit baffling to me to what this movie actually was, was even thought about in 1976 when it came out. I don't know what they were trying to sort of achieve or think, uh, which angle they were coming from. Even some of the characters, I didn't really realize, like get which angle they were coming from in this movie, what they were trying to gain or what they were trying to achieve by what they were doing. There's some memorable scenes in it, don't get us wrong. And there's, uh, I can say that it's it's extremely, it's a well-done movie. It might be one of the most well-done movies on any of the nasties list. But wow, it's, what, it's, it's right up there with Cannibal Holocaust when you think it's one of those movies that if you showed it to certain people, they might think you were some kind of psychotic nutcase. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to mention that one because it's um, at this point when I watched it, I remember thinking to myself, even when I was watching it, it was one of the most uncomfortable watches I've ever had recently. And uh, I don't think I was really prepared for this movie in in, in essence. But uh, saying that, I did kind of, I liked all the special features about it and I enjoyed what they were talking, how they were talking about the movie. I might watch this again actually with a director's commentary, or not director's, but a commentary on it. Because I do like the thought of what's behind, I think, to investigate what this movie, how they were coming across with this movie. It's hard to explain, actually. I'm, I'm tripping me up, myself up a lot of times trying to get through this. But, uh, yeah, it's just one that you think, I would not never have it on my top ten list, but as notoriety goes, you know, it's got to be right up there. So that's, I guess, that was last orgy. So coming in at number ten is Island of Death. Now, some of these movies on here might be considered... Uh, exploitational and this is one of them. Some of them are really brutal and uh, got some really graphic stuff in it so this is one of them. Some of them I don't think should be on this list for that reason and uh, some of them you can I haven't got the movies on here that I thought were the most extreme or anything it's just the ones that I particularly enjoy watching and sometimes got a right laugh out of them. Strange enough considering what you think the title is it's not really like that when you watch the film. Some of these movies are like that they've got the most terrible titles but they're actually not that bad or not really about that subject when you get it when you get to watch them. This one here, I do think that it's uh, it is really over the top with the fact of this couple who appear to be brother and sister. They go on this sort of um, rampage on this island, and they just they just to get there. I don't think there's any backstory to them. They just get on this island and they just wreak havoc. It's a, literally they just do whatever they want to do. Uh, and it, it gets very extreme at times. There's some really odd sort of uh, scenes in here involving animals as well. And uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a really odd watch. I knew it was going to be a bit like that. Uh, I was really surprised it got released on Crook because it was very hard to get. Uh, one of the nasties was very hard to get. Uh, Arrow need to get releasing more of these movies. Actually, I think they did it great, and I think they want to get back to their sort of um, 
uh, video nasties roots because I think that uh, for me that they, they don't seem to be doing that much now which is a big shame because that was one of the main reasons why I got into Arrow movies but anyway that's uh, it's highly all these ones are highly recommended and uh, but beware it's got some it's got some scenes in here which are a little bit weird but uh, I think it's it's great I just like these two this couple because literally they'll go to this island and they'll do anything they want to do uh, and they do do that so that's number 10 that's Island of Death so at number nine is a comedy classic. It is The Beast in Heat. Now, this movie here is uh, was another one that was really hard to get on VHS. And you probably the VHS probably does, I think it goes for a thousand pounds. It's because it was just hardly uh, pressed in the UK and then it was uh, gotten rid of or burned or whatever. So it's the VHS, it, if you want to spend a thousand pounds on it, you're more than welcome, but I know I don't. I got this from the US. This is the um, Severin release. And it's uh, it's actually it's a really good uh, some of these movies when you watch them on a on a sort of um, a bootleg the the quality on them is horrendous and then when you you think how would this ever look any good even on a Blu-ray I never thought this movie would be on a Blu-ray and here it is and it does look pretty good for what it is I mean it's re very low budget and the scenes in it are um they are graphic uh, I'm not saying going to say they're not uh, I do understand why it was banned. But I also think that it's so really badly done that you can't be... I don't think anyone can be upset by this movie, apart from the fact you could be saying, I'm watching one of the worst films of all time. But for some reason, as these Nazi exploitation movies go, this is a very enjoyable one, uh, mainly for the reasons that you'd probably be laughing more than you would be sitting there disgusted, as I was with Gestapo's Last Orgy. But uh, I do highly recommend it. I don't know if it's easy to get these days, but um, it's it was always going to be on my list. That's The Beast in Heat. So at number eight is one of the most sleaziest movies I think is on this list are the ones that I've got. It is Nightmares in a Damaged Brain. This is what you could call a quintessential sleaze fest. It's filmed, I think, really well in New York. And it's filmed at a time when New York was a bit of a pit. And it does uh, show that, uh, that sort of seedy side of the 42nd Avenue, uh, 42nd Street. And yeah, it's... Um, it's really um, intense in that way, and you do feel as if it's kind of part like a documentary as well. Uh, this movie has always looked a little bit not really the best quality, and although this one looks pretty good, and I think this one's got a slightly few more scenes in it than it does in any other film, any other version of it. And this movie is quite graphic as well, but also I find that um, there's just something about that I like. There's some things these movies come across when you look at them and you think, I don't really understand why I like it, but I just know I do. Um, but I think I like it for the fact of it just being a CD film. And I'm not saying that CD films are my go-to movies by any means, but I think that um, when a movie does that right, it looks really good. And uh, I like that sort of 1980s New York scene that was um, the sort of underbelly of it. And I do think that this movie is uh, out of print at the moment, I, I do believe. But if you can get your hands on it, check it out, because it's one of the, uh, it's one of the most notorious uh, bar movies as well so that's number eight that's nightmares in the damaged brain so number seven is probably one of the tamest movies in this selection and also it's a movie that a lot of people don't like at all but i think it's just a really good movie and i don't understand why they, they get the hate for this people say there's nothing happens in this movie but i think it, it it's quite a good movie and it moves along in quite a good pace i just like the setting of it and it is anthropophagus the beast and it's also got um, this remastered uh, picture on it and I do think the picture quality looks much better on the 2k remastered print here I think it's a, yeah, it's a 2k scan this movie for me was always one that I wanted to see. I didn't want to see because I heard so many bad things about it as some of these movies have got a bad uh, reputation for being awful to watch but um, they are quite good when you watch them or much better than you would think this one for me I just think it's just a great film I always have a good time with it and it's got some great good of gore effects in as well, and I, like I say, there is a scene in here which was, um, which why it was banned, and I can understand why it was, you know, why, why they thought it was uh, something that you shouldn't see, uh, or they should went a step too far. But uh, in essence, I just think the movie is very highly watchable and highly entertaining. That's Anthropophagus, the Beast. So number six is probably the funniest movie on this list, and I don't think it was meant to be funny. It is Flesh for Frankenstein or Andy Warhol's Frankenstein. Now, I've talked about this movie quite a few times. I think this film is exceptional and it's so awful that it's absolutely, it's a, it's a masterpiece. Now, you've got to see this movie to, to understand how 
ineptly filmed this was. It's got some good stars in it as well, but they just don't seem to be able to act or speak with English accents. The dialogue in here is horrendous, and uh, the special effects are quite good, actually, very over the top. And I will be getting a 4K of this because my good friend John Hall has managed to snag, snag me a, a copy. So I'll be getting that off him soon. So I was trying to get a Blu-ray update of this. And I've always heard that the Blu-ray wasn't that good. Uh, now the 4K is out. I'm going straight for that. That's why I'm holding off watching this because I'm really tempted to watch this movie as I am with Blood of Dracula as well. But you will not laugh so much as you will laugh in this uh, movie. I would love to tell you some of the lines in it, but... Um, I don't know if I could do a comedy justice when I when I reel them off. You might think, well, that doesn't sound that good. But believe you me, when you watch this movie, you will be in stitches by it. And it's a highly enjoyable movie as well, due to the performances here, especially by Udo Kia. I think he's great in everything. I like him as an actor. But in this one, I, I would love to see an uh, interview with him now to see someone ask him, what did you think of when you were making this movie? Did you realise it was that bad? Even Joe D'Alessandro as well, I'd like to see what he makes of it now. Maybe it's got some of that uh, on the special features on your 4K. So that's Flesh for Frankenstein. So coming in at number five is the only cannibal movie on this list. It is Cannibal Apocalypse. Now I could have put uh, Cannibal Holocaust on here. It is a great movie, but there is a lot more extreme stuff in it that I can't revisit it that much. Uh, although I do watch the, the censored version now uh, without the animal cruelty in it which is a much better version for me. I know I know what animal stuff is in it. I don't need to ever watch that again because some of it is quite harrowing. But this movie doesn't have any animal stuff in it apart from one scene that um, lasts for about a second. And uh, it's in this version because it's the American version. It's an absolutely stunning version from Kino Loba. Um, it, it looks the best it's ever looked. It's the best it's probably ever going to look. Will it ever get a 4K? Who knows? I do think this could probably get released in the UK, but that tiny little bit of animal cruelty they just it, the, it got cut in the the DVD, but this movie it's not I wouldn't say it's a cannibal movie as you would think of the cannibal Holocaust type movies. It's more kind of this uh, this team come back from uh, Vietnam and they have been subject to this poisonous gas which turns them into sort of mad men who like to eat people. And uh, it's got some great performances here from John Saxon as well, who apparently didn't like this movie when he put it out. He didn't want to know about it. He thought it was a bit too extreme. Um, although you would think that when he was acting, and especially in one scene, you would know what he was getting himself into, but anyway. But uh, this is highly recommended, as well all these are, I keep saying that. And uh, as cannibal movies go, you'll have to have a, um, you, you're not going to see a cannibal movie, but you are, if you know what I mean. So that's Cannibal Apocalypse. So coming in at number four is currently the only movie on here that I don't physically own. Now, I had this movie on Blu-ray, I had it on Steelbook, and I let the Steelbook go because... I was uh, getting some money together to buy some a drum kit, and I had to get two thousand pounds for that. So I sold a few things, not not um, not massive amount of things, but enough. Uh, obviously, the, the steel book for that went for quite a bit, and it is 1982's Tenebrae. Now I've got a feeling that this is definitely going to come out in 4K because Arrow are releasing all the other stuff on 4K. So I could buy the Blu-ray, and the Blu-ray looks quite good. But I want to hold off because I don't want to double dip on it like I have with the other ones, especially the Dario Argento stuff. I think that this um, this should get a, a good 4K upgrade because it hasn't had a 4K remastered one, which is another reason to pick it up. And I would love to see this one done in a special edition because the other one wasn't really a special edition, apart from the Steelbook. It was a lovely Steelbook as well. Um, so, like I say, I'm so tempted to get my hand on this, but I'm just holding out. I think this year Arrow or somebody will release a 4K of this. So that's Tenebrae. So at number three is a movie that I really enjoyed in the VHS days. And when I was watching it, because I watched it recently, I thought to myself, I don't think I've seen this since VHS, although I've had the Blu-ray, the Arrow Blu-ray here for a long time. And I don't know why I put it off, but I've, I've watched it uh, recently. And I had a, and now I thought to myself, is it going to live up to what I thought of it? Because I used to uh, watch this a lot uh, from the video shop, probably one of the, the ones that I watched the most. And I remember having a great time with it. But after all this time, would it still hold up? And it did. And it was even better than I thought it was. It is... The Burning. Now, I honestly thought that this was going to be a movie that I'll get back to, and I'll probably think that was all right. I remember liking it. I probably don't like it that much now, although I do appreciate it. But I had a, such a good time in this movie. I was really um, enjoying every single second of it, much more than I thought it was going to be. In fact, to be honest, it's been that long since I've seen it. I mean, they're talking like the 80s for this. Maybe even 85 was the last time I watched it, which is crazy when you say it. 
Um, I don't think I ever owned it on um, on DVD at all. In fact, that's this is the only time I've ever had it. And I just thought it was absolutely incredible. Now, it's great to think that when you, you get back to a film, how many times have you been back to a film that you've had, you know, holding high esteem and regards for back in the day, and you get it and you think, oh, what was I thinking of? That this was just one of the worst things I've seen in my life. And what was I, how was I even drawn to it as a, as a young person? But um, this is one of the rare times that it's actually, it's actually the same, if not better, than uh, what I thought about it. So highly recommend it, again. And uh, I had such a good time that the Zaro version is absolutely brilliant. I watched all the special features as well. Very good. So that's uh, The Burning. So at number two is a movie that um, I did like. I always thought it looked very dark on uh, VHS. And it wasn't until I got this 4K that I thought this movie is something else. I always knew it was a movie that I enjoyed. But I didn't realise how good this movie was last I saw the 4K. And it is The House by the Cemetery. This is released by Blue Underground. Anything released by Blue Underground on 4K, you know you're in for a good time. Or you're going to see something like the film has never looked before. They just take it back to the original negatives and they do what is supposed to get done to it. Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, the whole thing. Um, I think a lot of uh, uh, even big studios should take a leaf out of uh, Blue Underground's books and say, this is how you need to put a, a movie out with an exceptional slipcover with uh, special, tons of special features, maybe a soundtrack if you're lucky, and this is just the way that these things should be. Um, the movie itself, actually, I've always liked it, but I didn't really get it 100% until I watched it on this version. It does seem like um, Lucio Fulci's take on The Shining, believe it or not. When I watched it, I thought, I'm getting Shining vibes here, and when I looked it up online, they did say that there's a lot of uh, influence by The Shine on it, because I know that um, Lucio Fulci is influenced by certain other cinema, but I never knew this was influenced by anything. I thought it was kind of a bit of a um, sort of original story to a certain extent, although I don't think Lucio Fulci was renowned for his uh, original stuff. It was really kind of like a copy, but a well done copy. And this movie is no exception, so um, that's um, highly recommended actually, and it's also highly recommended on the 4K. If you can get the 4K on it, you will not see a movie looking so good. It just looks like it was literally shot yesterday. That's The House by the Cemetery. So number one in my top ten section one banned horror movies is Zombie. I don't think anyone is surprised by me saying that. Uh, I love this movie. It's my favourite horror film of all time. To have it released by uh, Blue Underground in this 4K is the best way you could ever see this movie. It looks incredible. It looks like a brand new movie, actually. I know that uh, the, the VHS... Looked very grubby, I was going to say. But um, this movie here shows how a great uh, film director that Lucio Fulci was. Um, it takes it in a new stratosphere. In fact, it's got some great scenes in it, which most films would struggle to replicate. I mean, the shark versus the zombie. I mean, that's just that's just an, one of the best scenes in all horror movies. Um, the picture quality in here, like I say, it's just stunning. Like House by the Cemetery. You know you're going to get something spectacular with uh, Blue Underground. I just really hope to do some more Fulci films. I don't know which ones it would do. But anything to do with Fulci was uh, a box tick for me. So that's my top 10. This is my number one. Uh, I do rec If anyone hasn't seen this movie, Arrow do do uh, a version of it in Zombie Flesh Eaters, which is uncut. It's on Blu-ray. It looks really nice. Don't get us wrong. But this here, it's just got it's the HDR just makes a difference the, the outdoor scenes of blood red it's just any everything you could ever want from a 4k upgrade of an old horror film that in essence you would think back in the day this looks a bit trashy it is a bit trashy and it'll never look any good but here you go this film has been cleaned up and shown how it should be shown and it looks exceptional and it makes you understand how much of an exceptional movie this is and to think this is in a section one ban video nasties to, to say that you shouldn't see this movie it's a travesty really because uh, if you couldn't get your hands on this so this movie was lost um, it's denying a lot of people uh, the chance to watch an absolute horror classic so next I'll be doing my section two and section three top tens there's some great films in there as well and I just really think as, uh, as with this one imagine if these films were unavailable to this day wow so Thanks for watching, you take care, and I will see you on the next video. Cheers.